good morning dear class and students dear students let us continue the second chapter of the vedic period and today we will discuss about the new doctrines the brahmins were responsible for bringing about many innovations innovations means ideas and evolving and developing new doctrines more emphasis was laid on penance called tapasya which became ritualistic so tapasya became most common penance in the vedic period the new doctrines include the doctrine of karma action dharma duty and moksha salvation the belief in rebirth gain roots so in the rigvedic period the people even believed about the rebirth of a person after his death consequently importantly all these innovations new ideas strengthen the position of brahmins so due to this all uh, implementation of new ideas now the brahmin became more important in the vedic period and in the vedic society the brahmins were said to have divine power and brahmins were considered as that they were having the divine power which we can say ishwarya taqat shakti no ritual or religious celebrations would commence or happen commence means happen without the presence of brahmins so without the presence of brahmins no religious ceremonies can take place so that is the point now let us go to <coughs> the economy the rigvedic economy was primarily postural postural means rigvedic people they were mostly depend on the animals and that's why they used to keep huge number of animals that time the agriculture work was not much done for arians cattle was synonymous with wealth so for arians cattle was very much supporter and the symbol of wealth a wealthy person was called gomat so during the vedic period a person who is having big number of animals then he was considered as the wealthy and the richest person gopa and gopati were epithets given to the king so gopa or gopati is the symbol or the title given to the kings in the rigveda godavari is used as a term for measures of time distance is called gabayati and dotus is called dohitar or the one who milks the cow now compared to the linguistic evidence for cattle rearing in the rigvedic agricultural activities find very few reference so when we talk about the agricultural activities of the early vedic people then we could see that the agriculture work was done not in much number so apart from goa a burli no other grains are mentioned so there are reference for fire being used for burning the forest cover and the practices of the sifting cultivations so the fire is mentioned in the uh, vedic documents doctrines and this particular fire is used for burning the jungles and at the time the sifting cultivation or sifting agriculture system was there further the area received low rainfall and the major rivers mentioned in the rigveda 
were known to change their courses frequently changes in the course frequently means their direction so often the <coughs> it is mentioned in the rig veda that the rivers at the time they used to change their own direction often and people were mostly depend on river waters for cultivation not in the rain rainfall in these conditions the alluvial land near the rivers could not be cultivated on the permanent basis since an alluvial soil actually is found beside the rivers and as it, as i said that the river water often they used to change their directions so it was not easy to cultivate permanently at the bank of the river major changes in the economy took place during the later vedic phases the rare importance of their culture grew during this phase so in the later vedic period we could see that the agriculture was given more important whereas in the early vedic period the animal husbandry was given important the growth of agriculture in the later vedic period was made possible by the availability of the vast tract of fertile alluvial land of the ganga yamuna dob and the middle ganga valley so in the later vedic period people could keep themselves busy in agriculture work due to the presence of alluvial soil in the ganga yamuna beside the ganga yamuna river both archaeological and literary sources depict the introduction of um, rice as the stable diet of the people so the archaeological and literary sources give the detail about the later vedic people and the cultivation and this <coughs> says that rice was the stable food of the people at that time the vedic text mentions very tandula and sali donating text men uh, donating the rice the later vedic text also refers to oxen yoked to the plow so oxen were used for plowing suggesting the prevalence of plow cultivations towards the end of this period iron plowsers and metal tools were used and a variety of crops were cultivated so in the later vedic period for cul- for plowing the ground they used to use plowsers iron plowsers and in a huge number now the cultivation started crops were cultivated in the later vedic period now let us go in the second video and complete the chapter